Hello and welcome to the latest edition of The Shindig. I'm your usual host, Dr. Tom Horn, and this is brought to you by the Red River Archaeology Group. Now, today we've got uh, another amazing podcast. It's with Ed Bethune of the 1722 Wagon Way Project. So we have this um, um, development of an industry largely fueled by the need of a company to dig themselves out of a hole that they've already got themselves into. And this podcast is part of Dig It Scotland, the Summer Digs program from 2023. Um, you don't build uh, an industry on that scale uh, without some form of um, something being there before it. So we, we, from that we infer, we assume that there is, there is an existing industry there, but it's, at this stage it's merely being upgraded. Um, this podcast is it's fantastic. It, it, it goes back to the earliest industrial revolutions in Scotland. And so you've got coal mining from the medieval period and then how that develops into the industrial period as well. And what do you need to do with coal? You need to use it to heat things, provide power. And what does it do in that area? It boils off seawater to create salt. Uh, so the monks from New Battle Abbey were granted permission back in the 12th century uh, to mine coal and to make salt along the coastline um, in question. So you've got this salt industry that grows up at the coast and you've got the coal. And there was an issue. You needed to get this power in the coal to the salt. And they created Scotland's first railway to do it. And this happened in 1722. So we get this amazing story of this industrial revolution involving salt and coal and coming back from the medieval period up until the end of the 19th century. But it's so much more than that. We've got the 1745 Battle of Preston Pans. It's actually fought along this wagonway line that becomes a railway line in 1815. So you've got all these different elements, you've got amazing industrial history, you've got a brilliant community project, and you've got battles. What more could you want? So we'll just give you a wee introduction now to the Scotland Digs 2023 Dig It Scotland project with Julianne. Dig It is a hub for Scottish archaeology coordinated by the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Our mission is to increase understanding of and engagement with archaeology for Scotland-based audiences. We do this by providing promotion and support to the heritage sector and enabling other sectors and excluded communities to connect with archaeology. One example of this is our annual Scotland Digs summer fieldwork campaigns. And for 2023, we're excited to be working with the Red River Archaeology Group to produce special episodes of the Shindig podcast to showcase a few of the fantastic archaeological projects taking place across the country. Thanks, Julianne. Now, over to my interview with Ed Bethune of the 1722 Wagon Way Project. So we've got Ed here today and he's going to tell us a little bit about um, a fascinating project. It's been on for quite a few years now, um, but I'll just stop blathering on and I'll just let Ed introduce you to the 1722 Wagon Way project and what, it, what it's doing now, what it's done in the past and what it hopes to achieve in the future. So I suppose my first question is, Ed, is can you just tell us about the project? Maybe just starting off with the very basics, you know, where we are in the world, it's in Scotland, but exactly where, and just the background to to where you are this this season. Uh, sure, and th thanks, Tom, for having me. Um, I never need any excuse to talk about this stuff, so uh, you're indulging a passion here. So, um, yeah, we are the 1722 Wagonway Heritage Group, and we run the, the project associated with discovering the background between, behind Scotland's first um, railway um, and the reasons behind it. We are just outside of Edinburgh um, in Scotland and uh, about 10 miles to the east. Um, and it really was um, an industrial area if you rewind the clock uh, three, four hundred years. Uh, so that's really what the project is about, is trying to establish why Scotland's first railway was built there, uh, running between Trenent and Kakenzi. Um, and it transpired through, um, the, the project transpired through personal research um, and then a lot of the right people being around at the right time in the local community and um, everyone wanting to know more about these early industries and to also 
tell the world about it because uh, it really is an exciting story. And it's a story that goes back a long way because just to give a little bit of background there, this is we're talking about a very early wagon way that develops into a, a railway. So it's the first for Scotland. This is we're talking about the 18th century. But we yeah. can go back about 500 years before that, aren't we? And we're, we're trying to get a solution to the problem of of getting salt. Maybe you'll describe that that process and then getting the, the energy to, to heat it. And that's something that may be going on, I think, for almost half a millennium before the, the, the 18th century. Am I right? Indeed. Yeah. Um, the, there are there are. Um... There are tantalizing clues left for us in documents such as the New Battle Charter. Uh, so the monks from New Battle Abbey were granted permission back in the 12th century uh, to mine coal and to make salt along the coastline um, in question. Um, and these are these are these are they're they're quite hazy, sketchy little links, but they're enough to tell us that there was something going on, that there was salt being made. Uh, and we know that there are historic mine workings across the area. Um, the, there's a bit of a gap, actually, in ter- from the New Battle Charter to, through to around about um, the late 16th and early 17th century, um, where there isn't really much um, by way of documentary evidence. However, uh, as soon as we hit 1591, um, Kakenzie is granted um, uh, a it's turned into a, a borough of barony um and that came with it uh okay what came with that was um uh increased possibilities for trade and and uh you know movement of commodities um there was a a, a port um built in around about 1630 as were um salt pans um built by the earl of winton um around that time so there's 12 or 13 salt pans established um, in 1630, now you don't build uh, an industry on that scale uh, without some form of um, something being there before it. So we, we, from that, we infer, we assume that there is there is an existing industry there, but is, at this stage, it's merely being upgraded. And then from 1630, um, this industry continues um, fairly effectively. Um, as by the end of the 17th century, this was the the largest salt making centre in the whole of Scotland. Um, and salt, of course, being um, one of the most important commodities um, that the nation could have at this stage, it used for food preservation, medicinal purposes, all sorts of um, uses in the um, evolving chemical industry at the time. Um, so when we get through to the moving from the 17th and into the early 18th century, this is a really well-established industry. Um, and then um, there came political mass- machinations which resulted in changes of ownership uh, and therefore um, uh, the need to possibly expand further, which is what we then saw. And this is, you, you talked about politics here and politics and 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 war and and the 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 wider world is is something that really impacts on the story of this 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 part of the world so to you know to recap you've got this sort of nascent well it's maybe not nascent it's nascent in a sort of early modern early industrial sense you've got mm-hmm. basically these huge salt pans where they they they, they, they boil seawater essentially using the coal yep. that they've they've brought down from from outside the town um, and they're creating salt and salt is being used for, you know, as we're talking about in, in foodstuffs, but it's also in the modern world, it's this greatly uh, important chemical that, that we use massively today. But in the 18th century, this part of the world was also very important politically because you've got um, what we're in the period of the long 18th century. So you've got things like the um, the William of Orange in, in, in England, You've got the Jacobite uh, rebellions coming in. And I think the first Jacobite rebellion is the one that people don't know so much about. But that's really when the modern story of of the Wagon Way kind of begins, isn't it? With what happens in, in 1715. Can you tell us just a little bit about what happens in this first of this Jacobite uprising becomes uh, uh, important to your story? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, 
I won't go too much into the the Jacobite side of it because I am far from a Jacobite historian. However, where it crosses over with the history of our industries um, in in Kakenzi and uh, and Trinent, the the failed um, uh, rising of seventeen fifteen um, resulted in the, the uh, many many Scottish estates being um, forfeited to the crown. Uh, by uh, the landowners who were Jacobite sympathisers, and uh, um, the, and there were there was a, a multitude of these across Scotland, um, and they were all auctioned off to um, usually um, English companies and uh, and and other such entities, um, um, who then looked to develop these estates and to use them for to to make money. Um, and p particularly uh, in the case of the Winton estate, which is the estate in question uh, in East Lothian, um, where we are, um, it had these existing industries. Um, and so when the Earl of Winton forfeited his estate and um, reputedly legged it to France and um, left his estate forfeit, um, there was a, f a couple of years where um, the uh the the legal profession um did its wranglings and all the rest of it and then by 1719 the, the estates are auctioned off and a company called the york buildings company um which um is based in london and um there's a still a street in london that you can go to that's called york buildings and there's various clues as to the to their headquarters down there um they they by this time were getting involved in um speculative ventures including the purchase of these scotch estates it was a perfect way of um them deflecting from some of their other some of their other failed business dealings around the world um including the south sea bubble which is a whole other story um so the, these um uh these estates were forfeit york buildings company bought up quite a few of them including the winton estate and it only takes them a couple of years before they're they're realizing that they need to um they need to actually make some proper money out of these estates and the and the scale at which the albeit it, for the time the scale on which the salt was being produced uh in the winton estate was significant um we were reaching a point where it needed to develop further to um to give them the profits they needed for the outlay um that they spent on the estate i think they spent fifty thousand pounds plus on purchasing this one estate um so, which in in those times is a lot of money uh so they they then invest uh three thousand five hundred pounds in speeding up the transit of coal from the coal mines to the salt pans therefore um more fuel uh equals more salt uh equals more profit etc so we have this um um development of an industry largely fueled by the need of a company to dig themselves out of a hole that they've already got themselves into um and then there follows a series of developments uh throughout the the 18th century and then following uh, another change of ownership into the 19th century um there are all sorts of other um changes which occur which lead us into the kind of era of railways that we know today and so we're 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 in this situation. So we're in say the the seventeen twenties, and this company has it's got a pre existing industry. It's got uh, an area where they can get coal, and the coal is can be taken down to Kirkenzy and used to heat the furnaces that boils off the seawater, and that crystallizes the salt, and you've got your salt. So what is their solution then to 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 making this process? more uh efficient and you can tell us obviously a bit about your project to 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 look into that yeah so so the the, the wagon way is one solution but we, we've touched on that that before the um being able to bring more coal to 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 boil the furnaces in a more um efficient um and ongoing manner they didn't have to break as many times um they also improved the salt pans at the same time through the 18th century the um they brought uh, they brought in um brick built 
flues underneath the salt pans rather than just being if you imagine a, a, a very rudimentary salt pan consists of um a big fire with a big pan of uh, seawater above above it um and and it's those, those are referred to um commonly as soul pans where the fire is burning on the sole of the grate uh, of the of the furnace and then the 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 modifications that come in through the 18th century involve um a furnace box at one end a firebox at one end leading into flues which channel the hot gases underneath the pans so there's there's the wagon way and then there's also modifications to the salt pans there are also upgrades of the harbors at the same uh, at, at the same period um some successful some not so successful they really were they were ex they were experimenting quite a lot um and that you, you've got to bear in mind i suppose that this is uh an industry which is this is all stuff that's been done for the first time there's there's development going on across the uk um however the not all of these secrets are being shared with each other these different um biz, these different um industry owners across the uk and um largely there's you find quite a lot of variation across different sites for example um i i have never seen us uh all the salt pan buildings i've seen excavated i've never seen two exactly the same there's the always slight variations and uh tinkering shall we say with the with the process and they're all trying to um get one ahead of everybody else i suppose um so there's all these different um modifications which are done um to the salt pans the wagon way itself um starts off as a as a as a very simple um wooden railway these are um you know the 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 tracks are made of wood the carts are made of wood this is it's essentially an answer to the solution of of muddy um lanes and roads which they're bringing the coal down on um and it, it's a it's a method that's borrowed from uh south of the border there's already been wooden railways in england for 100 years or so before this so they really are just bringing the technology north um, however, the success of this wagon way, and it, it's probably worth mentioning this time that most wooden railways have, have a fairly short lifespan before they're kind of um, upgraded or um, or ripped up and moved or whatever. Um, this 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 railway survived from 1722 all the way through to the latter end of the 19th century, um, and the reason is it's got, it's got a nice even gradient, and they could use gravity to such great effect um, uh, on bringing the coal down the hill, and, and less need for for horses to be hauling um, loaded wagons. Uh, they only the horses only dealt with the empties on the way back up. And archaeology, um, of course, is is our friend in the in this podcast, but. Um, I'd like you to talk about the archaeology and, and what you've discovered over the last few seasons before we talk about what you're doing this year. But it's it's not just been archaeology, so maybe to start by saying what you've got in terms of history, and you've got amazingly even some photographs again going back to the mid nineteenth century that sort of helped inform where you would be digging. Absolutely, and the, the so the the early part of our project was primarily concerned with. Um, uh a lot of research um as you say there are there are some photographs um which are kept by Kikenzie house and gardens um which show there's a couple of images showing um the the 19th century Kikenzie harbor with um wagons on the quayside and uh and rails running through the foreground um and some uh some of the loading mechanisms that they had on the quayside um so we had those photographs. There were also document. There's a, there's also some good documentary sources. We had um, a stroke of luck. We found in the National Records of Scotland lurking in the National Records of Scotland were um, the the diaries, the journals, work journals of the the guy that actually built the wagon way in 1722. Um, a chap called William Dixon, and there was two little calfskin uh diaries um of all the jobs that he did over a 25 year period um, um 
we we we've we spent uh four years plus transcribing these and uh they're now published um so and you know um check out our website for uh, you can you can if you want a copy of this you can you can get it i have actually come prepared i've got a copy of it right there so uh if anyone wants a copy of that you know where to go now um and it really is a fan fantastic snapshot um of um 18th century working life not just the wagon way um everything about a community this is a guy that's he's a right he's doing jobs for everybody um and uh it's, it's uh it, but it's given us a huge amount of information um we also had map evidence the the 19th century harbor that was built um at kakenzie which is admittedly the later part of the wagonway history um it was built by robert stevenson and sons so there's really good uh, map, uh maps um from the from the building of the harbor right through till um more further modifications in the in the mid 19th century so we had all this all this uh all these tantalizing clues but um fortunately we've got um alan braby within our um ranks and he is uh, able to lead our, our archaeological digs uh so he kind of opened the doors to be able to to do that and so from 2017 we've been we've been digging pretty much every year uh the pandemic obviously had a bit of a an impact um although we were still able to do some garden test pitting around the the port seat and glassworks area so that's another another industry that was all linked uh but in 2017 we did a dig on the quayside at kenzie uh we we then in 2018 and 19 we then um excavated some salt pans in the area as well um and then 2019 was a was a bit of a pivotal point for us because we we put in a test pit um further up the wagon way route just to see if there was any preservation left um we we kind of we tried to pick the the area that had been the least spoiled um quite significant parts of the wagon way being um uh probably boshed for want of a better term by services and roads and all the rest of it um but in 2019 we, we did a, a lovely test pit um which um we came down about a meter down we came onto a cobbled surface um and then we found the 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 imprints of wooden rails in the soil so we had this fantastic stroke of luck that this was still preserved um and all we although we couldn't um do anything further in 2019 we came back in 2021 and did a, a more extensive excavation there and I would tell people now to to go to the 1722 Wagway Project YouTube because they've got amazing videos of all these, and particularly the the ones where I think the 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 2021 when Alan and 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 team are going down the different uh, layers, getting towards the 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 the, the 1720s, the wooden uh, railway sleepers. Uh, that are sort of mineralized into the ground and then they've got the sort of later phases and you can just see that they've got you know within I think it's within sort of the first 20 years or so of life there's like two or three phases of it um so it, it, you get we'll we'll give out the links to to all of all of that as well and um and you really get a, a flavor for the complexity of the archaeology and just the amazing survivals that they've got there and I think actually when I was talking about the first 20 years, because it's it's quite an important site. Just before we go into what you're doing this year, um, just lead into it maybe by saying that we'll we'll leave the Jacobites um, too much. But um, I think there's there was a major uh, event happened in 1745. Perhaps you'd like to tell our listeners about how it was an important site, the Wagon Way, in that time. Absolutely. The 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 as luck would have it, or or whatever you want to call it. The um the the Battle of Preston Pans was um was fought in the area and uh, the wagon way uh, the wooden wagon way was slap bang in the middle of the of the of the battle site, um so in a nutshell the the government um forces uh, camped on the west on the western side of the wagon way and then when they realised the Jacobites were coming from the east in the morning um they 
turned around, crossed over the wagon way and fronted up to the Jacobites there. Um, so I, I, I'm told by the battle historians that the wagon way also played uh, an important part um, in the logistics of the battle in terms of rather than the, there's a slightly spurious um, um, assumption that um, cannons were lined up along the wagon way, although I've been told there's no evidence for this. Although, but what, what what we do find is that there are certain movements um, of people and um, resources within the battle landscape that can only have been possible um, by use of this of this trackway up the hill. Um, so um, it's a fascinating um, it's a fascinating area, and I think um, the if if anyone wants to know more about that to visit visit the battle of preston pans museum in in preston pans uh it's based in the town hall currently and um it's uh we've worked extensively with the battle trust over the last few years and um and i'd highly recommend it to anybody um i think that the aside from the battle the archaeology that we found that year in 2021 um it's particularly remarkable as I've already mentioned the, the William Dixon's journals um, as part of um, as part of the process of analyzing the, what we were seeing in the in the ground um, we we were actually able to match up entries in the journals to um, the the archaeology the, the actual archaeology within the trench um, essentially that there were three phases of wagon way that we found in the archaeology um and then when we went away and did some further research we found three distinct um independent phases of of um work that william dixon did um even down to the the, the dating of the one of the, of the middle phase um matched with diagnostic evidence from port scene glassworks which came off the surface of the second phase of um of wagon way um so we were able to accurately date each phase of of wagon way um when we had this dovetailing of um documentary evidence and archaeology uh to just build, build up this um fantastic picture um so that and, was incredibly exciting yeah and i mean yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating um but before we run out of time let's I just want to, because I could talk about this all day, what are you, this is part of this Dig It Scotland special episode, and Dig It are, are working with you this year to help promote your, your digs this summer. So if you just tell everyone just before we go what you're doing this year and uh, what you hope to achieve. Yeah, so this this year we're actually heading back to Kikenzie Harbour, um, which is incidentally right next door to where our little museum is based um and we have we've got we've got cfa archaeology and wessex archaeology two commercial units coming to lend expertise um we have we're tackling uh an area where there are salt pan buildings and part of the 19th century wagonway and potentially part of this 18th century wagonway um so we're we're going back into an area that we touched on before, but we we've, we've now got the opportunity to to open up a bit further um, and try and find some of the clues um, as to the uh, the the way that the harbour developed in conjunction with the salt pans and the wagonway. Um, now, I believe that very very soon, possibly by the end of the week, um, we have um, the East Lothian Council Archaeology Fortnight program coming available um which we are always in we're always we always take part in this and it, and it allows members of the public to um if to get in touch if they want to book a space to come and um, have a day's digging under the guidance of um some of our um professional archaeologists who are helping us out in that regard um so it's a really good opportunity for um it's any, anyone over the age of eight it's pretty much suitable for it's pretty strenuous work and we, we generally tend to find that anyone anyone who's eight and over can usually handle um a bit of archaeology uh in in the in, in the dig so um, i encourage anyone that wants to 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 get in touch uh there are, are limited spaces i have to say um and we'll we'll try and cater for as many people as possible 
Fantastic. And can you just give us the the dates again, and then we'll I'll I'll finish off by thanking you very much. But the the dates that you're going to be there this this year. Yeah. So we'll we'll be there from the seventh to the tenth of September. And uh, now the first day, the seventh, is going to be predominantly getting the machine in to to open up the uh, trenches. So our 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 public dig days will be the eighth, ninth, and tenth of September. Fantastic. Well. Um, we'll give out all the links when this podcast comes out. Um, but yeah, if you just search for 1722 Wagway Project, you'll find it on YouTube and Facebook and and, and Twitter. And uh, the website's fantastic as well. And uh, yeah, so it just leaves me to say to thank you to Ed and to everybody involved in the project for, for your time and uh, best of luck this year. Thanks very much. Well, you know, if you've listened to other podcasts that Luke and I have summarized, we tend to say it wasn't that amazing, but I think it was it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm not someone who's done a lot of industrial archaeology and, you know, I'm I'm an early medievalist um, at heart. But the story that Ed was telling there, you're taking it back into the medieval period and involving you know, a sort of medieval industrial revolution with the coal mining through to actual industrial revolution proper with, with the coal mining as we would understand it. And then the 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 salt panning that's in the medieval period, and then coming through into the what we'd call the early modern period and battles and community involvement. I thought that was just yeah, that's everything we were wanting to do here. And in terms of outreach, and it's you know it's it's great to see these projects. It's, I mean, is that is that the kind of impression that, that you got, Luke? Absolutely. This is one of those podcasts that it kind of it over delivered. We we went in looking for one thing, and it kind of covered a few different bases, and it was great. And it, on top of that, it's really good to to collaborate with with Digit Scotland on these kind of things as well. And uh, we're always open to collaborations to. As we always say it is, it's about telling the stories. It's about getting them out there. And this definitely does do that. And it, it was incredible. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, as yeah, as, as Luke says, you know, we, you know, there's just so many fascinating stories. Um, and, we, you know, and it could be just from a, a small town in Scotland, but it could be a small town in, in Botswana or Argentina, we just want to tell these stories. And if you want to share them with us um, and your communities and the international community, that that that's that's what we want to do. And and in fact, you know, if we're talking about community here, the community involvement in this project is 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 is, is, is brilliant. Um they are having excavations um between the 7th and the 10th of September. So this is 2023 if you're listening to this and 20 years from now. Um, they've got the excavation of the salt pans and the wagonway at Cookenzie Harbour, and that's in East Lothian in, in Scotland. And that will be supported by uh, another uh, uh, commercial archaeology group, and that's CFA Archaeology. Now, there's going to be some drop-in activities available between the 8th and the 10th of September, so you can get a chance to do some spoil sieving and some fines cleaning. So that's really, really cool, really good way to get involved. And archaeology is really good for sort of mental health. It's just something that really involves you in the moment um so yeah get 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 along to that um there's the nearby museum and that's open um at, from 10 a.m to 4 p.m every day um also on the 9th and the 10th there's a geophysics survey so you've probably seen that on on time team when you 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 probe the the soil to try and find some archaeology that's underneath the surface and that's with again another uh, great uh, commercial archaeology firm that's wessex archaeology and that's on the fields just uh to to the south of 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 the the main dig um so yeah there's there's a lot going on uh, if you search for 1722 wagonway project um you'll you'll find their amazing website and that's got a link to all their social media for example you know sort of twitter or or or, or x um yes yeah, so i think you can see that there's they've got a real they don't just talk about community engagement they're 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 actively doing it and i think you can also see that you know with us as commercial archaeology group you can see your cfa and with wessex you know we you know we we do all want to do outreach because we're all like archaeology geeks at heart as as poor luke knows to his cost having to listen to us for i think i'm becoming ago. one myself it's okay <laughs> <laughs> but 
there's a lot going on there. We have a lot going on ourselves um, over on our channels. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, we've loads to come. We, we've shot a lot of footage of Heritage Week here in Ireland last week. And hopefully we're going to get that out to you over the next uh, couple of weeks. They're dripping it out. So hit that subscribe button. Hit follow here on the podcast. Follow us on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. I keep saying Twitter, it's X, whatever it's called now. <laughs> so give us a follow on all of those. If you have any stories or if you know of any stories that you want us to cover on the Shindig, hit us up. Let us know. We'd love to hear from me. Okay, and it just remains for me to say thank you to Ed Bethune and the 1722 Wagonway Project. Thank you to Dig It Scotland and Scotland Digs 2023. And uh, yeah, well, we hope you enjoy and we'll, we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Look. Thank you.